whatever she decides next. Has the ability to impact an entire country. In ways no one could ever imagine. Buying Team Namibia is a choice you make for us, not just for you. Join the 2.5 million strong team that grows stronger with every single Team Namibia purchase. Team Namibia, together our future is brighter. Primetime News as a 25-minute news format. Coming to you every Monday to Friday between 19.30 hours and 20.00 hours on our YouTube channel. Good evening to our global audience and many thanks for joining us on the Tuesday edition. I'm Michael Madimba. In the lead tonight, President Dr. Hage Gengob arrived in the United Arab Emirates, where he's representing Namibia at the COP28 climate conference. The COP, also known as Conference of the Parties, as a climate conference referring to countries that signed up to the original UN Climate Agreement in 1992. This year's edition convening in the United Arab Emirates aims to reach global transformative climate action. The conference is a critical opportunity to correct course and accelerate action to tackle the climate crisis, with global temperatures hitting record highs and extreme weather events affecting people around the globe. The stain with the presidency President Dr. Hage Gengob was presented with a letter from the President of the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, Brahim Ghali, by Special Envoy Ambassador Mohammed Yaslam Baysat at State House on Monday. Here is more from this insert. I had the honor and the pleasure to be received by His Excellency President Hage Gengob, President of the Sister Republic of Namibia and to uh, deliver him a letter from his brother and colleague, His Excellency President Ibrahim Ghali, President of Sahara Republic. The letter is related to the historic and friendly relations of solidarity, cooperation, and struggle that has been always existed between Namibia and Western Sahara. But uh, Namibia is a well-respected country that uh, plays a very good uh, and a very increasing role inside SADC, inside the African Union, and as a very active member of the United Nations. Now, during the state end-of-year media briefing at State House on Monday, the Minister of Mines and Energy, Tom Alwindo, emphasized that Namibia should not solely rely on revenue generated from sealing the recently discovered natural resources. Instead, the country should focus on promoting local content and producing what is needed locally, which would be more useful and economically beneficial for the country. The Ministry has been repositioning our focus, not only being uh, preoccupied with marketing ourselves as a country with opportunities in the oil and gas sector, but also to build up our capabilities, how to manage this discovered resource. And that preparation is in terms of either having our, our staff members being attached to some of the oil producing countries or having working visits um, to some of these countries in order for us to learn some lessons to make sure that we manage the resource in the best interest of the country. Uh, and in all our engagement with those resource um, producing countries, the oil resource producing country uh, from the president, the lessons we to say we should not only rely on the revenues that is going to you know, come to us from selling this resource, selling the oil, but what is going to be more useful for us, more economically beneficial to us, is to make sure that we promote the local content where as much as services, as much as products that the new industry is going to be needing will have to produce within the local economy. And in that respect, we've been having a couple of workshops with uh, local entrepreneurs 
to the NGOs, with policy makers, to make sure that we do get their input, to make sure that when that local content policy and eventually the local content policy law become law, we all are on the same wavelength, we are on board to make sure that we benefit and that we promote our economic development through um, local content. Acting Labour Commissioner Kiliki Sitlakla on Monday warned all trade unions and employer organisations to submit their annual returns to the Labour Commissioner within six months after the end of the financial year with a strict deadline of the 30th of November 2023 imposed. This notice serves as a reminder to all trade unions and employers' organizations that have failed to adhere to their statutory obligations under Section 60 of the Labor Act, Act No. 11 of 2007. The aforementioned section requires all trade unions and employers' organizations to submit their annual returns to the Labor Commissioner within six months after the date of their financial year. A stern warning was issued, emphasizing the imperative for defaulting entities to promptly comply with the statutory provisions outlined in the Labor Act. Specifically, the directive required the submission of outstanding annual returns as per Section 60 of the Labor Act with a strict deadline of 30th November 2023. Defaulting trade unions and employers' organizations were duly notified of the potential consequences, such as the cancellation of their registration or the Labor Court suspending their registrations pending compliance, should they fail to meet the deadline of 30th November 2023. The window for compliance remains open until 30th November 2023, and there will be no extension thereafter. Your top roundup is up next with a business segment thereafter. Primetime Biz is your lead and source for all updates business related. President Dr. Hage Gengop has called on the media to concentrate their reporting on important issues instead of trivial ones like the travel allowance of politicians. During his annual press briefing at State House on Monday, Gengop digressed from his prepared speech to address the media criticism of his and his ministers travelling, reportedly to benefit from travel and subsistence allowances. Let's listen into a snippet of the President's briefing. We also explore areas of further investment. Now we are a green, green hydrogen country, the leader. And also oil and gas. These are the things we are discussing. We are affected now in the world. Believe it or not. We are affected. And we have to behave that way. Be proud of that too. It, it, you see how I'm standing here? Because I'm not feeling well. Now you tell me I want to travel? Enjoying traveling, sitting in that plane? At my age, I have been traveling since 60s, 1966. Bad planes that time. And I've been traveling. You think I enjoy it? I hold on the plane that this small plane of ours is shaking. And I see it, moment it moves, I'm holding you, see, I'm enjoying that. I'm doing it because I have to do it. Really. SNT, what is SNT to me? SNT. 
Some of you don't know me, and I have been working, put my body in places where paying me money. When on the world, then I paid money, I resigned and came back. It's not a question of money. If I give you the amount, uh, the complaint will collapse. You say, what? You are getting that money? So it's not a question of money. It's greed. greed. It's not what is motivating us. We are trying to save. Truly speaking, this attacks on ministers, cars. What is a car? It's a means. It's a, it's a means that you use to deliver. You have reduced things to cars, traveling. No, please. There are bigger things we have to discuss. Talk about S and P. No, let's move on. Meanwhile, during Monday's end of year media briefing at State House, President Dr. Hage Gengob expressed his concern over the current state of the Southern African Customs Union, SACU. He lamented Namibia's inability to import or industrialize due to the union's operations in retreat to Namibia as a beggar. The president's statement raises questions about the effectiveness of the union and its impact on Namibia's economy. I undertook state visit to South Africa at the invitation of President Ramaphosa. We had bilateral talks, good talks on the Orange River water question, which is lingering on for a long time since independence, 30 years, 33 years now. Uh, we talk about South African Customs Union, also a problem that we are like the beggars there. We have to discuss that, really, seriously. That we cannot import, we cannot industrialize the way this thing is. Look at the pigeon plan, it's closing down. So as long as these SACU tariffs issues are not going to be re uh, reconciled, and democratically decided, as we agreed, that now South Africa is the game. So we have to seriously also look at the future of SACU. Are we still really together in that? Or are people planning something else? And are we just sitting with our hands folded, not looking for alternatives? You scholars, this thing of it. Seriously, it's not bag you want bagging anybody. Imports come, cars will come. You can never order a car directly from Germany, who have been here in this country for a long time. Mercedes Benz, you have to order through South Africa. They add value there, create job, transfer technology, mark up and sell it to us. Is that really good? Good neighborhood? No, it is not. This is where I leave it with the top segment. Stand by for my colleague Chikoni and Amy on the sports desk with the latest updates on sport in action. But first, we consult the weather report for tomorrow's outlook.
Welcome to Sport Planet, your destination for all things sporting action. I am Jaconia Nehemia. Cricket kickstarts the segment. Namibia's Eagles secured a crucial victory against Kenya in the 2023 ICC Men's T20 World Cup Africa Region Qualifier in Windhoek on Monday. Namibia has been performing exceptionally well since the start of the qualifier, winning their fourth match in the competition by six wickets against Kenya. Disciplined bowling by Jan Freiling and JJ Smith kept the Kenyan team under pressure in the early overs as they put on a brisk match winning stand of 59 runs. With eight points from their four contests, Namibia has maintained its position at the top of the Africa region qualifier since the start of the competition. On to a cracking game in prospect in Champions League football. Newcastle must overcome the might of Paris Saint-Germain and the mounting injury list if the Magpies' first foray into the Champions League for 20 years is not to come to a premature end later tonight. Damaging back-to-back -back defeats to Borussia Dortmund have left Eddie Howe's men sitting bottom of a devilishly difficult Group F, also featuring last season's semi-finalists AC Milan. Newcastle must avoid defeat in the French capital to have any chance of reaching the last 16. Yeah, I think it's I think it's good to have all those mixture of emotions going into a match. I think there needs to be we need to play on the edge. I think we're at our best. I think every team is their best when they have that um, different emotion running through them. So I expect that from the players tomorrow. We're going to need every ounce of motivation, energy to get a result here. This is a defining moment in our Champions League campaign. We're well aware of where we sit in the group and um, you know what can happen tomorrow. So we're going to give it everything. Stay tuned for a sports roundup. This is where we leave it for tonight. Do make a date with us again tomorrow. Before I sign out, a reminder that to stay abreast with developments within and beyond our borders. Do follow the on-screen prompts to be subscribed to our channel. Feel free to interact with us in the comment section. Otherwise, from myself, Jaconia Nehemia, and my production crew, it's good night.